Hi guys, back again to do another makeup video. I hope you enjoyed my last video. Um, a bit of a rant, but uh, we're a little more focused today. So I've gone in and done two concealers to cover discoloration and acne, and that is the NW25, which has a more of a pink tone that I should be than I should really be using. But like I always talk about, I play with yellow and pinks to give different warmths to my skin. And then I'm using the NYX eyeshadow base, which I use around my eyebrows, and it's just a little brighter and whiter than this one, and so I'll put it over top some discoloration as well. And in my last video, I mentioned the Bello Licio uh, foundation, and um, I had just received the cappuccino color, which is a new color, and is less pink. And then that same day, I just I received the vanilla. So I'm trying two new shades. It is a five fluid ounce bottle for $8.95. And I don't recommend putting cheap products on your skin, but if they work well, why not? So I wanted to try it for the cost as well as I was out of my regular airbrush foundation. And the reason I use airbrush is because it just covers my, my skin really well. I dry out a lot as well as gives me a nice finish for the discoloration and acne and evening my skin tone. So I play around with the pinks and yellows and the vanilla has more of a pink and the cappuccino is a little flatter, more of a yellow, but both of them are um, kind of play off each other. Okay, so with these foundations, you have to shake them really well. This is a new formula apparently. Um, so it, I noticed that when I put it through my spray gun, which isn't of the same brand, my gun is a Dynair um, portable to go. I'm trying to show it to you, but it's like all hooked up here. And I found that I had to shake these really well. These newer formulas, I find I haven't had to, but I'm not sure if I'm using one new, one old, or what. So just to be safe, always shake your airbrush makeup really, really well. You can't go wrong. Okay, and so I'm going to start with the darker color first. So I'm going to do a couple of drops of the cappuccino. And I always use a little bit more than traditional makeup companies recommend just because I do have a lot of coverage that I like and that being said it still goes on really light so you can do airbrush makeup at home and I do these videos to show you that and how you can get a great coverage if you do have acne discoloration fine lines um, it's great for even if you have wrinkled skin um, it just covers really light and well and I think the hardest part about doing uh, airbrush foundation for the average person is keeping your gun clean, but it's really super easy. And I'm going to go through the forehead. And you just, your distance, you want to keep a nice distance so your skin, the product is even, but honestly I don't have to work too hard. I go in closer for where I want a little bit more coverage or have a dark spot. As you see, I'll go in like that. A little bit more on my cheeks just because I have a little sun damage. And on my chin because I had a major breakout and on my nose lately. I still have to kind of clean up those eyebrows. I do just, and really it feels like a really light coverage and I like to drag it just a little bit down into the neck. Okay, and then in between uh, using my airbrush color, I always clean my product out. For those of you who are experienced with airbrush, you would already know this, but um, I never know what level anyone's at, so I always like to just kind of throw all those tips in. It really helped me out um, when I was first learning airbrush, and if you're more experienced, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the lighter color. I just like to give it another shake. And this one I'm going to do very lightly. I'm just going to go into the center of the face. Oh, see it stopped spraying, so let's... They clog easy. So I just, if that happens, pull back my lever, let it go, and I just pinch it. Sometimes it's just a little clogged. I always use a Q-tip. I pull back the lever and I clean in here. And you can feel it. So I'm just going to go soft circles 
just wherever I want it to be a little bit brighter and lighter. And that helps for me with covering discoloration and darker skin tone. I always go a little lighter in the eye area because I like to bring the focus to the face there. And then I drag it down just in case I've sprayed a little too much and want to blend. And just through the center of the face. And I might expand it out just so it evens out. And I'll keep the darker contour around the, the cheeks. So once again, I got my cleaner. I'm just going to clean that out. So that's pretty much my foundation routine to cover discoloration, acne, fine lines, dry skin, etc., breakouts. If you have questions on how to cover your own skin, you can leave them below um, if you're not sure what product or how to mix it in. I don't have to do the concealer um, with the airbrush, but I find it just adds a little more coverage so you don't see darkness underneath the foundation. And now I'm just pretty much used to my own little system that I get a flawless coverage and I'm pretty much um, camera ready, <coughs> excuse me, or just day to day. So I might just wear my makeup like this and add some blush if it was a day to day. But uh, today I'm gonna do a little bit more of a fuller look just because last time I went really light. Um, I like to get my foundation out of the way. I'm not one of those girls who likes to do the eye makeup first. I have nothing against it. If you want to do it that way, go ahead. So you can do the same thing with airbrush, where you do your eyes first. Um, I'm not going to do a super heavy eye. I'm a nice clean liner the way, in the fashion that I like it, which is with a cat eye. Um, I've got some beautiful new airbrush colors that I might, I might do a little purple. I've got uh, one called Taro and one called Amethyst from Dynair. And I just like um, their colors just because I don't have to mix them all. You can buy your red, yellow, blue and mix them yourself, which is easy, but it just takes one step out of the process. And um, I haven't had any purple for a really long time, so I forgot I got these. And so I'm gonna do probably a, a little look with them. And nothing too heavy today. And for lashes, I might do a really light lash just cause I've been wearing a really heavy one lately. Um, it's falling apart. I reuse my lashes, a lot of people do. You can reuse your strip lashes quite a bit. No one talks about it, but um, it's just the way it is. It's just, you know, life, quarantine. I'm gonna take my little stencil out. I like to use these just to shape. I haven't tried these colors before, so I don't know how they're gonna look quite pretty. This is the Taro, which is like a deeper lilac almost if you're looking at it. Oh, just need a little bit more. And once again, you don't need much to do with the eyes. If you're more experienced, you probably know that. I always assume that people watching this don't do airbrush very much or they're just learning. And I'm going to go underneath. I like to free, kind of free um, do it. I know I just used the stencil, but it created a nice line, but then I like to go underneath and just, I love doing it kind of like that, where it's just kind of freestyling. Freestyling and stenciling. And I don't overthink it, I just kind of spray gently as I'm controlling the lever. Uh, this to go, one that I'm using, there's no control dial like most airbrush machines. So I've been doing airbrush for so long that um, I just intuitively gauge with my finger the air pressure. Sorry, some of my bottles fell out. And the neat freak in me is trying to keep everything clean. Yeah, so I just naturally gauge. I don't um, have a control on my compressor because this is a to-go one. Most compressors have it, especially the beginner ones. I don't really like it. I find it slows me down because I like to go fast and heavy intuitively. So I'm going to do a darker purple on the edges. And I love doing more um, kind of unusual eye makeup looks with the airbrush. I see a lot of wedding makeup um, looks when people are using airbrush and rightly so most artists use it for weddings but you don't have to I do airbrush every day and it's fast and it's easy 
and you, once you get a hang of the guns and the pressure, it's so uh, it's so beautiful to put on. As you can see, it's just smooth and easy. Um, and it's not as messy as the powders. I used to do a lot of traveling with the photography and doing makeup and clients, and I found it, you know, I'd get up at 3 a.m. and I'd do airbrush, and I was done in nine minutes. And people are like, oh my God, why do you look so good at 3, 4 in the morning on the plane? And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is easy. And so I was telling flight attendants how to do it. Um, so I'm going to go in. I'm just going to use this lightly as a guide. I'm just, I just want a little uh, definition on the corner. And you can see it just added a little gradation, a shade. I'm going to do a fun fall purple eye. Oh, I love that. This is a really pretty purple. So this is, once again, Taro and Amethyst with Dynair. And I use different products from different companies. Um... It's all about the tools and what works for you and completing your look and also looking at your kit and your budget and seeing what you have. You don't have to buy all new product. Right now with COVID, um, I stopped doing makeup and photography uh, because I didn't want to buy all new powder products um, because that would be the responsible thing to do and new brushes if you're working on clients. And you're liable, so you really need to keep things clean. So I chose not to um, continue on with that at this time. I might later, but I really want to focus on doing these videos and creating looks. And I'm just having a lot of fun and staying busy by doing this. So I hope you get inspired with it. So I'm really loving those two purples. And then instead of airbrushing the liner, I'm just going to do a nice liquid. I also wear glasses, so for me to do airbrush close to the eye without having my glasses on, I can't be bothered. And I always, I, I like the consistency of this, so especially on the inner corners. So I like to kind of loosely do my airbrush because of that. Um, I need my glasses to look uh, close up, and I don't know if anyone talks about that. I think people just assume that. When you do makeup, you don't have to wear glasses, but for people who need glasses or wear contacts, this is a lot of work. And for me, it's intuitive because I've been doing it so long as a makeup artist, a photographer, what have you, but um, I sympathize. So I try to show you ways of doing makeup that if you wear glasses, if you don't have time, um, and I always add a little extra punch or kick just so to show you how you can kick it up and not wear the same thing every day and just kind of have fun. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty much my eye look, it's done. And I just kind of really stepped outside of the box, well not really stepped outside of the box, but instead of putting you know shadow underneath, I used the airbrush, I used a brighter color for my skin tone and hair, it helps me pop. If I wanted to take this one step further, I would take a little shimmer, probably my Lady Luck, and I'll do it for the purposes of the video. I better clean out my gun though. Always remember to clean out your gun in between colors, or that can be a nightmare. So right now I have a hot amount of purple in there, or should I say a hot mass? So I'm cleaning that out. I'm going to do a beautiful little gold pop on the center of the lid and on my highlight. And so I love this. This is a beautiful matte look. I would wear that every day, no problem. Uh, the shimmer just takes it at one step higher for my, my glamour girls who want just something a little extra. For my alternative fashion girls, this would be cool. Who knows, you might all like it. Um, so, so I put electrician's tape around all my bottles because of when I traveled, the old style bottle would pop open and it would be a mess. Now it's a screw top, which is great. Um, so I don't have to put the electrician tape around the top of my bottles, but I still have old bottles that I haven't used all the product. So we're going to use some of my Lady Luck, which is a beautiful gold shimmer. One of Dynair's most popular colors. And once again, just an easy way to throw on the makeup. I always squirt first, which anybody experienced watching this would know to do. And I'm just doing it lightly on my highlights on my bones. Um, it's a day-to-day -day look. I don't want to be over shimmer for night. I might go s deeper. So you can see I have light, taro, and then the amethyst. So I'm going to go right in between the colors. And that just gave it a little pop and a little color. I'm leaving my centers um, lighter. 
it's all about light and dark. So I'm going to put that on hold and I'm going to grab that liner. I just, I mean, I did all this and I had already put my liner on. You can see how it's a little shimmery on here. So I'm just going to hold and touch and then drag just to um, freshen up that little liner. And I still have to put my lashes on, so I'm not too worried about it. I just, the Virgo in me needs to do that so I don't look like a total mess on camera. So that was the Lady Luck. You could have used Vanity or anything, but I like the play off of the orange and the purple. I'm always using contrasting colors. Just think of your color wheel. If you're um, not an artist and you're doing this just for you, the color wheel is just what artists, anyone who, who's learning painting or drawing, you know, more so painting, use to understand color theory. And um, that's so important, even with makeup, because you're basically painting on your face or someone else's. So for the purposes of this video, I'm really directing it more to someone who's less experienced and perhaps um, wants to, is intrigued by airbrush, just loves makeup, wants to mix products, or even just do the same techniques and ideas with regular makeup products. I'm all about using what works for you, so if you have questions, feel free to put them down below. And if you're enjoying this video so far, remember to like, share, and click that bell for notifications on my latest videos. It really helps me out. And I'm really showing people how they can create their own look, inspire them to just kind of get dressed, have fun right now during a really quiet time, and maybe they're losing hope or feeling kind of hopeless or just falling into that rut, pajamas and den buns. But we're doing my hair today, so um, another quick, easy style like the last video, just a little kind of pops of glamour to get you inspired for a day-to-day -day look and not going over the top. I will do some over the top videos with Halloween coming up. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm not big into gore, but I do like doing glamour and then doing a photo. So I don't know. I'm playing with those ideas. If you have suggestions, put them down below. So anyway, I've already done my bangs, which as you know, I do the tiny con air. I cut my bangs really short this time. It was, sorry, I have to put everything away as I work. It's a habit. Uh, I need a clean workspace all the time. I am not a messy makeup person. Everything's clean. Everything, everything I've got going on, it's so I can grab my tools. So if I dip off camera, that's why. <laughs> okay, um, so we've got this eye look going on. We need to do a blush. As you know, my trusty blushes have the same colors. I love light pinks, orange. I have deep reds. I have a light brown. So I'm going to go into a softer brown. It's got a pink tone to it, just for something different. And I have some brighter pink already on my brush, so we now have a pinky brown. I don't know, does everybody clean their brush? I could have done all that with airbrush too. Um, but this is fun, playing around, doing it different. I'm just gonna add a little light pink, just because I already had pink on the brush. All right. Like it, hate it, let me know. So for some reason, I'm really drawn to doing my blush with my powders. I don't know if it's the act of using the, the blush brush that I like, or it's just habit. Um, I used to do it only with the Dynair colors, and I used to do a pinky peach. Um, but I then I got in the habit of kind of conserving my colors, using up my powdered products, and then I was like, why can't I just use what I want? Why do I have to feel like I have to use only airbrush or only powder? And I really started just using what I feel like and being more intuitive with my artistic process. So that might be too artsy-fartsy for the regular people who are just looking to get some technique and just figure out how they could do this day to day. So um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. All right, so because I'll be wearing a face mask, I've kind of given up on lips. I do have these soft brown, soft pink by NYX. These seem to be really nice and they hold well and they don't rub off on the mask. Um, if anything rubs off, it's my makeup and it's usually on my nose and right here. Um, this is a soft matte lip cream by NYX. I got this at a drugstore just to try it out. I liked, I saw color and, and ran up to the kiosk. Uh, I just wanted a light pink. I just wanted a neutral. I, I still find it hard to go completely lip gloss or lip free with my mask. And I suffer for it later. Like I mentioned in my last video, it's like I finally stopped wearing red because I had red mark around my whole face. 
and I was by myself and it was like, if I don't look in a mirror, which I actually don't, it's all over and nobody seems to want to tell me and I don't blame them. <laughs> okay, anyway, I am going to be doing my three quarter curling iron today on my hair. I just cut it and colored it. And if you're interested in how I do that, let me know. Um, it's got a lot of body, so I'm just doing a loose curl just for the purposes of getting ready and not wasting a ton of time. I always use the Styling Bio Silk Drops. Um, I put them in before and after I dry my hair, and then I do my dog walks. So this is all from putting my hair up. I put it in a low ponytail, wear a huge hat, and I do my dog walk. So um, I don't worry if there's kinks everywhere. I just pop in the curls, and this seems to work really well. And a lot of people never think to use a tiny curling iron. So I hope this helps you somehow. And on that note, I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab some lashes, and I'm back. So I'll be using my Duo Glue, and I'm using, this is one of my most uh, favorite drugstore brand lashes. It is the Page Boy by Kiss. Comes in a pack of five, <laughs> and I'm on my last pair of these ones. I use them a lot for my clients when I shot Boudoir because it looked very natural but gave a little bit of a heightened look. And so I'm out of, well, I'm taking a break from some big thick lashes and I'm gonna do these ones. So while the curling iron is heating, let's apply some lashes. I have to remember to get more of those. I feel like whenever I go to the grocery or the drugstore to buy the lashes, um, I can never find the same ones. And then I find the same ones six weeks later and I've forgotten what they are. And I've like rediscovered them. So, I'm trying to list the name of the lashes. This one's very lightweight and wispy. So this will give you a natural look. And always look for your shortest end. A friend of mine, hang on, I can't even see it. I need, uh, here's the shortest end. Uh, a friend of mine had asked me to do an eyelash video and I've done many and I talk about it throughout my videos. So you just have to watch them. And so I never mentioned, but and most people, not everybody knows how to put lashes on and I forget that. But you look for your shortest end if you're gonna do this yourself. I just use the end of a, a, a makeup brush, a liquid liner to apply my glue. You don't have to rush because the duo glue takes about 60 seconds to get tacky. So, um, and you only need a very small drop, it goes a long way. So I just kind of fan it. Actually, I don't fan it, that's one of my pet peeves. What I do is I just kind of give it a minute and I do other stuff and I don't stress about putting them on or putting them perfect because one of the reasons I do my liner first is so I don't have to worry about the line being perfect. So I'm just going to make sure my edges are right and I have them backwards. So you always want to check your lashes and even I have a little MAC silver tray I put them on and it just helps to see everything because it's reflective. Great if you do need glasses like someone like me. So I can see from far away, but up close, I always want to be careful. So I'm just going to uh, start from the center and then work my way into my corners. And if it has a thick lash band, they're going to pop naturally, so you just hold them a little longer on your corners. And I don't hold it too long because I find that that can wreck it. So I start from the middle once again, and then I just kind of round up and it just kind of sucks it, and then I gently push. Now, this was easy to put on because they're light lashes. If you're doing a thicker band, you've got to hold them longer. So that's for my boys and girls who are new to makeup, or my moms who don't usually wear lashes but just want a little pop here and there. So I'm going to leave it alone, and then I'll go back and revisit and check it. Um, pulled out my mascara because that's one thing I always forget to do and I love to seal my reels to my fake so that they don't split and it's a little trick for taking pictures of people because there's nothing worse than having to edit someone's eye which you shouldn't have to do if the makeup's done correctly and when you do close-ups in the camera the eyelash, the fake and the reel shouldn't be split. I mean you can go back and edit but ideally you don't want to. And I know you may not be having pictures taken, this is your day-to-day -day makeup, but I can't help thinking that way because of being a makeup artist and a photographer and having to edit hundreds of images. So you've just got to bear with me on that. 
Anyway, it still looks correct because when you're talking to people, if your eyelashes are split, it's distracting as well as if they're crooked. But if you've done your liner first, you don't have to be so anal about how you've put your lashes on. People really don't notice that. Um, so don't worry about it. So I'm gonna take my Tresemme spray lightly. I've split my hair in two sections and I'm gonna pop in some loose three quarter curls just to add a little kick to my day. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pull in my sides a little bit and go under and in. And I'm gonna go around both sides like that. And you can see it does a beautiful ringlet and it took me two seconds. So my hair is dry. I put in the Tresemme, I did wash it. And when you do this after you wash your hair and dry it, you have more volume already. And I try to explain that to people, um, especially when I did photograph them because they wouldn't understand that and come with dirty hair. And dirty hair is oil heavy and it's flat and it's frizzy. When you first wash your hair, you have volume. And you want that, especially for the type of photography I used to do with shooting people. I would use a lot of sexy boudoir, bedhead looking images. And then for the pinup, it was more structured, but even so, it's a nice clean head of hair and there's more volume, so less teasing, um, can curl it easier, things like that. You know, and somebody else may disagree, and that's fine, but I'm talking from experience of what I did with hair, so um, feel free to share your comments or tips down below. I'm totally open-minded that way. Just don't use this as a platform to promote your business or try and sell me something. That I think I'm getting sick of. I think I've been targeted so many times for fraud, being a small business owner that I'm just sick of it and I'm very hostile on the phone with people who are pushing things at me that I don't need. And selling to small businesses seems to be a business in itself. And if you do small business meetings within your community, you're gonna see that. And it just gets tiring and old. And really, uh, I mentioned this in my last video, and I'll be doing a video on this, what is my weight loss is taking responsibility and doing your research. And if you apply those same principles to a lot of different areas in your life, you'll see that it makes sense. Um, when you know your stuff and know your business and know it works for you, you don't need to have all these extraneous services. You aren't sold as easy. Um, you stop, people stop using that as a way to sell to you. And like I said, the fraud is ridiculous that, you know, I would regularly get emails and phone calls. But on a positive note, um, I just barked back, confronted them, and they stopped. So... Don't be afraid to have a voice. You can see, and you can see like I'm doing this quite quickly. I don't hold the curls long. I scrunch them right after because your heat, the heat molds your hair. And even with my really short bangs, I have naturally curly hair. And so because of that, when I flat iron each layer, I press down because it molds the hair and it'll keep it flat without me working too hard. Um, right now it's a little wavy because I was out doing a dog walk. So every day, I've been taking my baby puppy, who's 11, uh, for a dog walk, and we do two walks a day, two in the morning. We take, we do our neighborhood walk, and then we do our beach walk, where we go down to a beautiful beach or a very wooded area, and he loves it. So right now he's snoozing, he's busy. So I just don't think about how many sections, I do what I feel is needed, and then I'll go back in and just pop in loose curls. And this is how I've been doing my hair during quarantine and COVID. I've been using different widths of curling irons. I have not been doing major pinup hair. I'm not tied to one style. Um, and that may sound fickle, but it's just a reflection of my own um, personality in regards to I don't feel I need to be in one group or one genre or one style. I had so much grief being in vintage groups and posting pictures of myself of hair and makeup and I just got sick of it. I got sick of the narrow-mindedness. At the same time, I still love pinup. I love vintage glamour. I love forgotten glamour and just, it, I think it's gorgeous. But I like to do my own modern looks because I don't think I'm the traditional looking a vintage person and some people made that clear and I know other people have been experiencing that so I choose to post on YouTube Facebook and Instagram and I do my own type of style and I incorporate all kinds of glamour and I really encourage people to open their minds and that's why I'm showing you that if you are not a makeup person or a hair person how you can do 
hair and makeup during quarantine, um, just day to day that isn't a lot of effort, but at the same time can really make you feel good and really lift your spirits if you need it. So as you can see, my hair is super um, wavy from the curls and the little curls just kind of add something different to the look. So my bangs are a little bit of a hot mess right now. And that's like I said, I apologize for that. So I'll go back in and for the purpose, of, whoa, see I disappeared again. For the purposes of this video and I'll just like clean them up a little bit. So I'll let that heat, and while we're letting that heat, I'll move on to the last detail. I always do my mascara last, even after the hair. And I just go in, lift the eye, push up, and then I may go like that. And so be sure to clean your fingers. You can also use these little tools that come with the lashes to place the lash and to just kind of close your fake to your reel after you put your mascara on. Um, I don't worry about it. Plus, if you wear glasses, that could be kind of overwhelming or a little bit crazy. So I can see from a distance, I just touch. And if I feel like I got some black on me, just add a little bit more. And you can see how it opens up and you just got more white in the eye. And that's just a little photography makeup trick. So and I, I, I'm using the Maybelline, a very light, reliable, great lash. What I like about this mascara is it doesn't flake. So if you wear lashes or if you wear mascara on your real lashes, which I haven't done for years, I just do strip lashes every day. Uh, I just love it. It's something that I've always done. It just helps my look pop because I have black hair. And I made it part of my routine. So it's really not a lot of work. As you can see, I pop them on easily and I do different styles and widths. Um, and you just do the bottom. So I just drag across. And for my day-to-day -day look, I don't worry about having, um, you know, heavy makeup or anything like that. This might be too light for camera, or you might be able to see this just well. But this is a light eye for me. And it might be a lot for another person who's super busy in regards to doesn't take the time to do hair, makeup, eyebrows. Don't worry about it. These are just tips to encourage you if you're curious and you're thinking about adding a little something or changing your look. There's nothing more fun than changing your look and working on yourself. So, so I like to split my layers and this is a very low heat, but it does the trick and it just helps because I have wavy hair and I believe a calic right here. So as you can see, it's a little uneven. I could go in and just trim that. Um, I'm careful how much I take off. So I might give it a day or two for my hair to settle before I go in and do that because I was walking out in the rain so it's gonna trigger my hair to go curly again, especially my bangs. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it's pouring out. So it's supposed to be the next four days of just rain. So my poor puppy. And you see how it just kind of falls in? So I don't stress about getting every little hair. If you wanna see a video on how I do Betty Bangs or just bangs, sometimes I have them longer. Uh, I have a video um, in my library, just go under hair or let me know and I'll send it to you, whatever. So I just got it roundabout. This will work for today. It's like I said, pouring out. I'm probably gonna to have to run out again and my bangs will just go all crazy. And then if you really wanna add some definition or shape, Take your BioSilk, actually I keep calling it BioSilk. It's just like BioSilk and you buy it in the drugstore. It's like some really expensive price for a drugstore product, but it's gorgeous product. You can use it on your hands and arms and it's silky. I use the Ion Silk Styling Drops and from Sally's. And it's a quarter of the price and it's really good quality and reliable. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna go back in with my prep and pime and just smooth and lighten around here on the nose. So you can see that. I like to do right in here a little bit and on the chin. Wherever I might have darkness, I'll go in and use this prep and prime powder. And I 
I talked about it in my last video extensively how it's great for multiple skin tones because most of them are designed to be very whitish. And that can be annoying if you're a mixed skin tone like me. You know, I may appear to be fair, but it's still um, not as fair as completely white. So it does show up. And with discoloration, um, finding products that hide the discoloration and not accentuate it. And sometimes when we layer on top of a darker skin that's uneven, um, whether it be from discoloration or um, a darker skin tone, you can look ashy and it can look... Um, just not right. So I'm showing you how to, you can play with your colors, your lights and darks, your formulas, so that you can disguise marks from acne and um, discoloration, or if you have a darker skin tone, how you can um, blend in. I know it's tricky, but it's actually easy once you find, if you're doing this for yourself, I'm curling backwards, no, yes I am. Uh, we're gonna go this way. Um, if you're doing this for yourself, it's really easier than it seems. Um, if you comment below or if you want to send me a picture, I can tell you what to use in terms of colors for your skin if you're not sure. Um, I know it can be kind of daunting when you go into the makeup counters and they don't understand what you're trying to do. I've seen a lot of um, East Indian, West Indian uh, women come in and they want that look that you see in the images. And it is a look where they're using light and dark foundations. It's a con it's a form of contouring. And the person in front of them doesn't understand because all they see is one color. But you cannot do one flat color when you sell a foundation. It just doesn't work like that. I mean, you can do use it for cover-up, but you yourself will have to use a lighter concealer for under the eyes if you want depth and if you want dimension in your makeup. Um, so that's the best advice I can give you if you don't do makeup on a regular basis. You want to kind of play with your lights and darks. Um, one color doesn't seem to, to do it, you know? And you don't have to layer it on like you're seeing a lot of Instagrammers, 20-somethings doing. You can do this at any age and just kind of add a little light and depth to your look without looking shiny, without looking overdone. Okay, so it's really coming down out there. Forget the bangs, they're just kind of a hot mess. But you can see the curls. And then I went in and just added a few more on the top because from all the ponytails today, um, it created a little kinks. But then I just let it go and leave it. And that's the look. And I wore a brighter t-shirt so you could see how it pops. But if you have any length of hair, you can do this. The trick to it is your hair needs to be washed so you have the volume. Oh, there's my baby puppy. He's over here. And then I used just a little bit of a medium hold truss spray. Available at any drugstore, reasonably priced. And then I use these because it gives it a silky look and even a shiny look. So I know for the, the video I've at, used this a few times, but so I'll just go like that. Now this doesn't get rid of flyaways. It will make your hair kind of a silky, shiny. Um, if you want to get rid of the flyaways, and quite often I do these videos and I don't bother getting rid of the flyaways, and they, you can probably see them. And I end up editing in my cover photo. But I use the pomades. So you can use whatever brand you want. This one is the Sabavito. God, I pronounce everything wrong. So I just use very little. And I'm just literally going in and getting rid of the flyaways. And I strategically put it on and pull it down and out because it will clump up. I do not use this stuff to do heavy styling because it's not built for that. It's got a waxy consistency. It's really for putting your hair, slicking it together in sections. So I might drag it lightly across my bangs. I try not to drag too much product on the bangs because it can make them very flat and heavy and it loses that natural kind of bounce and look and then you look like worse than Spock. Spock looked good on Stair Track. You would look just like a bad version of Spock. Okay, so I still have kinks and waves and I'm letting it go. Remember, it's a rainy day out there. This is a no effort hair. I'm gonna wear it at home while I work on the computer remotely. And I'm feeling great because I'm actually done for the day. So once again, that was the three quarter curling iron. You can use it in any brand. This one is a Helen of Troy Gold Series, which is a really great curling iron. So if you go to Sally's, you can get them in all different sizes. Today it was three eighths or three quarter. I can't remember, but it's a tiny one. So all you have to do is look at this. I don't know how to use this. Oh man, it's maybe the size bigger than a dime. So take a picture. Anyway, 
All right, so I'm gonna unplug that. And like I said, I unplug everything, I clean everything up as I work. It's a habit from working on makeup counters, working with clients. It's a great practice to have even at home so your counter doesn't look like a disaster. I put my glues away. I have a little lash kit. Get rid of that. I have my tray. I have towels, black towels. I wipe off everything. And then I wash them every week. And I put that away so I can always find everything. And then I have my, my mirrors. This, for me, is a very soft makeup look. So I hope you like it. I hope it inspires you. And I hope you um, get dressed today. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.